Namaste. So let's talk about Sati Khanda chapter 12, because this chapter is pivotal to the whole Khanda, the whole section. It brings together a number of threads and shows how Brahma and all the Prajapatis and it were set up, totally set up by Shiva for the unfolding of the events to come. What happens? Well, Daksha goes to the ocean of milk, the causal ocean. The causal ocean is that energy of Vishnu, which really is the universe. The ocean of milk means that, it, not that it is made of milk, but that it looks like milk. What it really is, is pure creative energy, the Mahatattva. So anyway, Daksha goes there and he's praying to Shakti. And then she appears in the form of Kalika, riding on a lion. I love this because the lion signifies Shiva's energy. It means that she has the potency. Shiva gives her the potency to carry out his wishes for creation of the world. And so she is given much leeway, much individual uh, permission in how she carries this out. So even though she has a lot of uh, initiative, she always checks with Shiva to see if this is what he really wants, because her mission, her first priority is to please him. Not so with Brahma and Daksha. Brahma thinks he's the Lord of the universe <laughs> and that uh, Rudra is his son. And he's still trying to compensate. You know, you see the ordinary psychology of Brahma. He's like an ordinary human being. He tries to compensate for the insult so-called insult of Rudra, just telling it like it is. Brahma, man, you're, you're in Maya. You're lusting after your own daughter. Back in the previous chapter. So then he becomes angry and he keeps trying to prove that he's right. You know, such a typical uh, passionate creator Right? And we see this in human psychology as well. People will pick a fight and they become identified with it. It becomes part of their identity and they just can't let it go. So Daksha, of course, being the son, mental son of Brahma, is carrying out this whole scenario. And so he invokes Shakti and begs her for the boon to have her as his daughter. Now, meanwhile, what has happened is that Lord Brahma has given him these hot chicks <laughs> and he's having literally thousands of sons and daughters, <laughs> you know, banging away like a rabbit <laughs> and populating the early universe. So this is Brahma's concern. He wants to make sure that the population increases, the, the subjects, as they're called here, uh, meaning the people under the control of the demigods, because this is how the demigods realize their greatness, by having lots of subjects. We see in the world today, it's totally overpopulated. Why? Just so these rascal leaders have a lot of subjects and they can do pretty much whatever they want. So anyway, this is the ordinary mundane psychology uh, exhibited perfectly by Brahma and Daksha. But when Shakti appears, she says, hear my heavy words. This means this is like a hint. Hey, listen up. I'm going to say something that's going to change the succeeding events. Now, Daksha, all he cares about is getting Shiva married 
so that by his example, uh, other people will take wives and go on to populate the universe and make them powerful. So when she says, hey, listen to my weighty words, he's kind of like, oh, this doesn't matter. But she says, I will become your daughter. But if you disrespect me, I will give up my body. See, and the seed of that disrespect is Brahma's disregard of Rudra. Brahma considers Rudra his son and that Rudra insulted him when he sim simply stated the fact that Brahma, man, you're off base, lusting after your own daughter. So, of course, this is Brahma's nature. He can't help it because he's passion on the inside and the outside. So, of course, they put any beautiful woman in front of him, he's going to lust after her. He can't help himself. So he should have taken Rudra's chastisement as a lesson, realizing that, oh, this is the incarnation of Shiva, and taking it to heart and try to be, you know, more recondite in the future. But instead, he used it to feed his ego. And he nursed a grudge against Rudra. And this was passed on to Daksha. And we will see in the future that this uh, disregard, this disrespect of Shiva as Rudra grows to the point where when Daksha is to do a big sacrifice, he invites all the gods but Rudra. And of course, this becomes the cause of Sati giving up her body in the yogic fire. So ever since then, sati is the ritual of the wife entering the fire when the husband passes away. So anyway, this is the turning point in the whole story, because what began as a simple grudge is now going to turn out to be the ruination of Daksha's and Brahma's reputation. And we'll see this in the upcoming chapters. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya.